Hey guys, Matt here from mksmarthouse.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the software for the blinds control using Windows. So in the last video we left off with the blinds control device being fully built so all it needs is firmware and to be connected to the home automation server. So let's start off with the firmware. I recommend having my website open up so that way you have all the steps and commands ready and so you do not have to type in everything you can just copy and paste. I know this is a software video but there are some hardware things that we need besides a computer. We are going to need an Arduino of some kind, preferably an Uno or a Mega equivalent with its USB cable of course, and mail to mail DuPont jumper cables. Links to all these items will be in the description or on the website. On my website you will also find my shop where you can find the kit, PCB, and 3D printed parts to make this device. The first thing we are going to do is grab the Arduino and put a jumper cable from RES to ground. Then grab the blinds control and connect all the pins to their corresponding spots. So TX to TX, RX to RX, ground to ground, and 5 volts to 5 volts. Before we continue, check to make sure the 2 pin jumper is above PGM or program. Please note that in this video I will not go over how to set up the Arduino IDE and will assume that it is set up and you know how to connect an Arduino to it. If you do not know how to set it up or it is not set up, then go check out my door sensor software video where I go in detail of this entire process. Next we are going to head over to my site, the link is in the description to the exact page and press download blinds control firmware. On the new page, press download, then go to your file explorer and downloads folder and double click on mk-blindscontrol.ino. A pop-up will come up asking if you want to put it in a folder. Click OK. It should bring up the code for the blinds control, and there are only a few things that we have to change. The first thing is the Wi-Fi settings, which are the SSID and password, so change those according to your network. Please keep in mind that the ESP8266 only works on 2.4 GHz, so type in your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi SSID and password, not your 5 GHz. Also when adding the information only change what is inside the quotation marks. Next set of parameters are the web updater settings. The devices I designed are great because I implemented a web user interface for each individual device. So that way if you ever have to flash new firmware, you just go to its web address. The web address information is found at the top of the code in the giant comment block. The first parameter is the host name of the device. Usually I only change the last digit, but since this is the first blind control, I will keep it as it is. Next is the update path, and personally I don't change that. After that is the web user interface, username and password. These are the credentials you would use to access the web page because each device is protected. The next set of parameters are for MQTT. The first one is the subscribe topic, and this is the topic for which the device listens for commands or messages from the server. The next one is the MQTT server IP address, and this is simply the IP address of your home automation or open app server. The last one is the unique device ID, and this simply differentiates each device on the MQTT side. I usually just change the last digit for every single device. That is it, the code is ready to be flashed. So go to tools and make sure the board is generic ESP8266 module and the port is com and a number. Once those are good, press the upload button. It is the one with an arrow pointing to the right. When it is uploading, you should see the dots moving at the bottom and some percents. After it is done uploading, you should see it say 100% and done uploading. Let's test it. First, unplug the DuPont wires in between the Arduino and the device. Then take the 2 pin jumper and move it above run. Finally plug the device into the wall. To confirm that it flashed correctly and is working you can fire up mqtt.fx and connect to the server and in the subscribe section type in the pound symbol and press subscribe. If you do not have mqtt.fx then check out my home automation server setup guide. Then click on the publish tab. In the topic bar, type in the subscribe topic that we wrote in the blinds control device code that we flashed. Next in the message box, type in any number between 0 and 100 and press publish. If the servo motor moves, then we are all set. Now the device is complete and just needs to be added to open up. So SSH into your Pi or whatever your server may be. The first thing we are going to do is create the blinds control item. 
So type in sudo nano slash etc slash open up to slash items slash home the items and press enter. You may need to type in admin password. Then type in the comment slash slash blinds control. Then underneath that we are going to create the blinds control item. So type in this line of code on the screen now or over on my website and press enter. Now let me go over the item we created. It allows us to control the blinds control. But let me go a little bit more in detail. The first part is dimmer and since this device is a blinds control we need to control the position of the servo motor with numbers. The next part is the item name and I just used its host name without the dash. After that is the label text and it is what shows up in the interface and how it is formatted with the name. Next to that is the icon name which is what picture shows up in the interface. After that is the item tag and what this does is allow this item to be used with HomeKit and Amazon Echo like you saw in the demo video. If you do not have either of those set up then you can check out my videos covering those topics. Then lastly we have the MQTT path to device. In there is a subscribe topic that we coded into the device. I have two blinds controls so I'll paste it in again and change the item name, label text as well as the MQTT path to match the device's subscribe topic. That's it for the items file. Now press Control X then Y and enter. Next up is the sitemap file so we can control the device. Type in sudo nano slash etc slash openup2 slash sitemaps slash home.sitemap and press enter. It will bring up the sitemap. If you are following along with my series then we have many different frames in our sitemap. I'm going to put the device in the frame called mk-room. So go to the frame and type in the following code block and press enter. What we did is import the item into the sitemap so we can control it from the user interface. The control it has is you can either press one of the three buttons or use the slider. Again, since I have two, I will also put the text in jk-room frame and change the numbers. Now press control X then Y enter. Before we go any further, let's confirm that everything works. So go to your web user interface and then basic UI. You should see the blinds control item. If you press the buttons and move the slider, you should see the servo move. Great, now that we know the blinds control works, let's make it automatically open and close at the times we set. In SSH, type in sudo nano slash etc slash open up to slash rules slash home dot rules and press enter. At the bottom of the file, type in this big code block right here. Let me explain what this does. The first rule sets the blinds to half every day at 7 a.m. The second rule closes the blinds every day at 6 p.m. If you want to change the times for the rules, go watch my sprinkler system software video where I show you how to change cron expressions. Since I have two blinds, I will also add those blinds to each rule. Now press Ctrl X, then Y and enter. That is it. The software is complete. Now all we have to do is install the device in its final place, which will be completed in the next final installation video. Alright, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or head over to mksmarts.com forum. Goodbye.